What's up, Earth Rockers? Uh, it's your boy Shovatar here again uh, for another Order of Ecclesia video. This time, what we got here is we got um, hard mode uh, on New Game Plus, and to explain what exactly all that means. Um, New Game Plus and Order of Ecclesia, you basically start off with the character that you had at the end of whatever file you're going from, um, you're doing New Game Plus on. So, what has, what, what's been done in previous games is New Game Plus, um, will just, like, start you off with some of the same tools, or some of the same, like, some of the same souls in Aria of Sorrow, or some of the same weapons. In Order of Ecclesia, you are... The very same Shinoa with the very same stats and the very same everything as you are at the start at, at the end of the last file. Um, and that little training area right there, we have to fight the two skeleton heroes instead of the two um, instead of like the regular bone throwers, which is what you have to do there on normal. That was the thing that um, <laughs> that convinced me that. Uh, that hard mode was really only going to be feasible on New Game Plus, because on if you do hard mode on a fresh file, then those skeleton heroes will basically like two shot you. Um, again, not impossible, or rather, I haven't even said that yet. Uh, not impossible, but uh, very unpleasant. And the biggest reason that I even decided to do this is because of uh, Rapidus Fio. Having Rapidus Fio, which is the um, run super fast, green, or a shockwave ability, having that from the start of the game just makes everything uh, like so fun. Um, and, I, and I guess I should finish explaining, like, you don't have literally everything from the previous file. You don't have glyphs that are... Um, uh, like, story required, like like the Magnet Glyph, you have to actually get the Magnet Glyph. You don't have Velaticus, the Wing Glyph, from the very, very end of, um... Uh... of Dracula's Castle. And, um... You have to... And even though you have the same... Basically... Okay, I'm, I'm doing a very bad job of explaining it, because I'm, I'm trying to cover, like, three things at the same time. So, hard mode. Hard mode in the video game. There are three maximum levels in hard mode. You can do max level 50, you can do max level 25, you can do max level 1. If you beat hard max level 1, you can unlock hard max level 255. Uh, I can't even for the life of me... Begin to guess why you would ever do that. In my experience with these games, max level 50 basically means no max level, because I, I can't imagine under what circumstances in a normal playthrough you'd ever hit, you'd ever go above 50. And right here, with this file, um, I think I'm going to be starting off at level, like, 37 or something, and I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to hit 50 by the end of it. Um, so right off the bat, you can see what makes um, New Game Plus different, it's the, the common New Game Plus problem, a new, the, the problem that I encountered in Port Portrait of Ruin also when I did Portrait of Ruin New Game Plus, which is that New Game Plus, by its very nature, makes the early game incredibly easy. And the thing is that with, with, with hard mode, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, where... If you do hard mode fresh file, if you do hard mode max, if you do hard mode new game plus, the early game is way too easy. If you do hard mode fresh file, the early game is like fucking impossible. <laughs> so, um, I just decided to do what was more fun, what was more feasible, what um, what made more sense for me to do. And this this right here is pretty fun. Tearing through Ruvas Forest with fucking Rapidus Vio. Is like so cool and this is actually the thing that inspired me to maybe once i realized that they let game lets you keep rapidus fio in new game plus that was what inspired me actually to go back and look at um dawn of sorrow again and and check something out because with the dawn of sorrow 
Dawn of Sorrow and Aria of Sorrow both have New Game Plus modes. I kind of ignored both of them. It wasn't until Portrait of Ruin that I did New Game Plus, and I did New Game Plus specifically um, to account for some of the difficulties within in uh, hard mode. Um, rather, to account for the difficulty of hard mode. Um, whereas with Aria of Sorrow and Dawn of Sorrow, I don't think I never played hard mode in Dawn of Sorrow. I don't remember why not. Um, oh, because you can't start a new file on hard mode in Dawn of Sorrow. You can only do um, you can only do new game plus hard mode. I I think is that right? Fuck, I can't remember. Anyway, whatever. Um, Portrait of Ruin hard mode new game plus Dawn of Sorrow. New Game Plus. When I realized that in Order of Ecclesia, New Game Plus let you keep Rapidus Fio. You don't keep Volaticus or Magnus, but you keep Rapidus Fio. I went back to Dawn of Sorrow to check out if Dawn of Sorrow's um, uh, New Game Plus mode let you keep the Black Panther Soul. And the Black Panther Soul is basically the Dawn and Aria of Sorrow equivalent of the Rapidus Fio backlift, where it's like you zoom around super fast. And I decided that. If Dawn of Sorrow let me keep that for New Game Plus, I would actually maybe give it a shot, because that seemed like it would be super fun, but unfortunately it does not. Just another thing that's wrong with, uh, with Dawn of Sorrow. And I actually don't know if Portrait of Ruin lets you keep Speed Up, which is that game's version of Black Panther, so I, I kind of never really thought about it. I didn't really realize, I think, when I, when I, when I got Speed Up in Portrait of Ruin, I actually didn't really understand that it was the Black Panther Soul. I thought that it was just like a a more generic movement speed increase that wouldn't be as like super dramatic, but that's what it is. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking very much about hard mode. Um, hard mode is vicious. In hard mode everything does way more damage and there are a couple of other things, a couple of other things that are exclusive to hard mode like this shit right here with the blades going up and down. It's also true that in a pattern that began, I believe, with Aria of Sorrow hard mode, Order of Ecclesia's hard mode, enemies do more damage and you take substantially more damage from environmental hazards. And the reason I keep on attacking the air is because with this emulator, it has a bad habit of if I go for too long without making an input, when I go to make an input after a long period of downtime, it doesn't always realize that that's what I'm trying to do. And by attacking there periodically, I'm just kind of keeping the emulator awake and making sure that it that it knows I'm still there, so that way when I do have what I think is the right time to go through the uh, the blade gauntlet, I'll go through it immediately. And Rapidus Fio really helps this a lot, makes it a lot more um, a lot more feasible. And actually, there's some sequence breaking. I don't well, maybe sequence breaking is too strong a word. Rapidus Fio lets me um, uh, do the Taimyo Mountains in one in one visit. In in the main game. So there are two villagers in the Taimyo Mountains, and in New Game Plus, as in the main game, you do have to rescue all the villagers to get access to the second half of the game and get the good ending. Um, so I do still have to go out of my way to rescue all the villagers. It's not quite like Portrait of Ruin, where... Um, or rather, it's not quite like Richter mode, where I'm just like blazing through the levels as fast as possible and I don't give a fuck about anything. I do still have to rescue all the villagers. And in the Taimyo Mountains, there are two villagers who, um, uh, one of whom you can't get to unless you have the double jump, but you can also, um, get to him if you have Rapidus Fio, and I'll point that out when, when we get there. The reason I'm talking about that and I'm not, I'm not talking about any of these early levels is because, as I already said, the early game in New Game Plus is really pretty, um, is pretty uneventful. And... Again, it's, it's a situation where, you know, I think Portrait of Ruin... I think Order of Ecclesia is better than Portrait of Ruin in almost every way, but I do think Portrait of Ruin had a good idea, which was the, um... I guess I should, I guess I should explain this. Well, this boring-ass boss fight happens. Um, in, or in Portrait of Ruin, if you beat um, certain difficulties of hard mode, then you would get... Any subsequent runs done on the save file that beat that mode would get certain buffs. Like, for example, if you beat um, hard mode max level 25 on a save file in Portrait of Ruin, every subsequent run would get a flat plus 25, or no, plus 50? Plus 50 buff to int. Um, and then if you beat max hard max level 1, it would be a plus 50 buff to strength. 
That's super important because the problem that that solves is... The reason I didn't want to do hard max level 1 is not because I'm averse to challenges in which you are fragile. That's kind of like the whole point of Castlevania is... It doesn't take that many hits to kill you in a lot of the classic Castlevania games. So that's not what I'm philosophically opposed to. What I really don't like, what I really hate, are damage sponge enemies. And my concern with hard max level 1 would just be that it would take fucking forever to kill everything. Because the only buffs you would have would come from your weapons or your armor. Um, and it just didn't sound very fun to me. But that system that I talked about with the permanent buffs to subsequent um, runs on the same save file meant that if I did a hard max level 1 run on a save file that had beat the mode previously, I would go through the mode with um, with an attack buff that would mean that I would not have to... I would be doing a, a, an appropriate amount of damage, basically. Um, again, appropriate overall for the whole run means that the early game, things die really fast. So it's not a perfect solution, but it was a solution that was acceptable to me, and it was, and it was what... I thought would be the most fun. Order of Ecclesia doesn't really do that. You do get you do get rewards for beating hard mode and other on hard mode like difficulties, but they're not nearly as dramatic as like you know, Twin B Konami Man plus fifty int plus fifty strength. All that is to say, that's why I'm not doing um, for this game what I did for Portrait of Ruin, that being hard max level 1, because I didn't... I just couldn't think of a way to make it fun. And again, like, that just has to do with, like, the philosophy of... You know, hard max level 1 is supposed to be something that's just hard to beat, like, period. Right? Not, not hard to beat, um... in, like, a single run. Although it would be... anyway. Like, if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could, well... I don't like saying things like this because I think that what I was gonna say is if I I'm sure that I could beat hard max level one if I put my mind to it, but could I could I beat it without ever dying once is another is another question. With with this with new game plus hard max level fifty I'm I'm much more confident in that and and I think that it's just it's faster paced it's more fun it's better footage it's it's. Uh, Hard Max Level 1 is just more of like a like a challenge you impose on yourself. It's not the kind of thing that I think would be very interesting to watch or um or do. The reason I don't like to say things like, oh I'm sure I could do, you know, X if I felt like it is because that's not like the, it, that's basically meaningless. It, it, like anybody can just say that. You know what I mean? Anybody could just say, oh, I could do this if I wanted to. And, and because because that's true. Like anybody, I saw like a like a discussion the other day, an online, like an online thing, an online conversations that people were having. Um, and they were talking about uh, Mike Matei. I don't know if you guys know who Mike Matei is. Um, I would hope so, but maybe not. I don't know. Basically, uh, Mike Matei is the Angry Video Game Nerd's uh, buddy. He helped uh, write, co-write the Angry Video Game Nerd. He shows up in a lot of the videos. Um, I assume you guys know who the Angry Video Game Nerd is, since you're on YouTube watching video game videos, but who knows? Anyway, Mike Matei, uh, uh, internet celebrity guy. People in the thread were, were talking about him, um, and somebody mentioned that he something like something he had done that was impressive like i think he beat ninja gaiden without dying um this is so fucking crazy yeah those octopi have a bad habit of just kind of like chain hitting you if you get slightly too close to them and that is the one thing about having rapid as vo on all the time that is kind of a downside is that sometimes it does make it hard to control your positioning and sometimes you can accidentally like bonk into things when you don't need to or when you don't when you don't want to rather when you neither when you neither need to or want to Anyway, yeah, Mike Matei. Um, I think it was like something like beating Ninja Gaiden without dying or something like that. Uh, and somebody in the else in the thread said, "Yeah, well, he only was able to do that because he grinded it for like a week." And it's like, <laughs> like yes, 
<laughs> he he practiced. <laughs> that's how you that's how you do anything. That's how anybody accomplishes anything that's difficult. They they spend time practicing until they can do it and then they do it. Like it was just such a weird objection. Like the fact that it took him like what's he supposed to sit down on his first fucking try and no death ninja gaiden? Like it's such a weird And that's why I say like the statement of I could do that if I felt like it is meaningless because because it's just a statement of like yeah, every human being is capable I mean short of short of some kind of like, you know, like like abnormality or or disability or something. Every human being is capable physically of of beating Ninja Gaiden without dying, right? It's just a case of it's just a question of who is going to put in the time and the effort to actually um to actually do it, right? That's that's the difference. And I think I think it stems from this. Oh, this is the sequence break right here. I think yeah. So I got the lady in the cave. That's the first villager. Now I'm getting another villager. And I want to point out these uh these spiders. I'm trying so hard to kill this owl. Yeah, fuck it. The spiders on hard mode are like on fucking crack. They just like zoom around at a million miles an hour. You probably already noticed that. And that's especially dangerous because um I don't know if I ever even got a chance to mention this in my in my long Order of Ecclesia video. Um. The spiders poison you, and poison in the Order of Ecclesia is pretty brutal. So the fact that they're moving at like a million miles an hour is really scary, and it's one of many reasons why I'm I'm pretty happy that I only ever really I'm pretty happy that I never tried to do like a a, a fresh file um, on hard mode. And what's cool about this is that you can unlock the the Misty Forest Road through the Taimyo Mountains no matter which exit you go out of. When I first did that little sequence break where I get to the villager before, like, without the double jump, I was afraid that leaving the zone through that entrance, through, through that exit, wouldn't unlock the next zone, but fortunately it does. I don't know, maybe not, maybe not every person can beat Ninja Gaiden without dying. I mean, I haven't done it, but it's like, but that's what I'm saying, like, I could, like, for me to just sit here and say I could do it if I wanted to, therefore it's like I've already, it's like, it's it's a pointless thing to say. Um, I mean, I think that, because that game's pretty fast, so there probably is, like, a, a reflex uh, barrier you have to overcome. I actually am kind of, well, there's not really much to say about this early game stuff, so I'm, I'm kind of going off on some tangents. Um... The Skeleton Cave actually has some really relevant changes in hard mode, which I'm going to point out when we get to them. Because, yeah, that guy right there being here is kind of crazy. Um, and again, like, he, there he just died in two seconds, but imagine... Because that's a Skeleton Blaze, that's like an endgame enemy. They don't... Um, they don't show up in the game until you get to Dracula's Castle, so imagine... Um, you know, doing hard mode on a fresh file, and then you get there, and there's one of those fucking ninja skeletons jumping around. It's essentially a mini boss. Um, and what makes the skeleton cave dangerous is uh, these uh, turrets. That that big line of turrets right there, that big uh, tower of turrets, I should say. That's a real big problem, and I actually don't even know how you would deal with that on a fresh file. I guess you would you would have Luminadio at this point, but I don't know how you would get close enough so that Luminadio could hit them without also getting hit by their fireballs. I don't know. You can stand on top of the turrets in this game, so maybe it would just be a case of, like, um... Uh... You just kill the top two and then jump on top of them, then, then jump through. I don't know. See... That's how the Maneater fight should go every time. I really don't like the Maneater fight. I'm really not a big fan of it. I don't like the fact that it summons like random, like, well, they're not random, but a bunch of tiny projectiles that bounce around that are very hard to see. And what's nice also about playing New Game Plus on hard mode is that uh, you get through the early game very fast, and Order of Ecclesia's early game is not, uh, is not its strongest suit. It's not terrible. It's, oh yeah, the turrets also fire way faster on hard mode, as you can see.
And because the turrets do magic damage, that means that they always do. You always take a bunch from them, so if you were to do this on hard mode, um, on a fresh file, that would definitely be one of the most dangerous spots. Because a lot of the other... Like, hard modes in these games, there are some games where hard mode fundamentally changes the nature of the game, and then there are hard modes where you turn on hard mode and you, like, barely even notice it. I would say Order of Ecclesia is... If it wasn't for the fact that every enemy does way more damage, most of the time hard mode isn't really noticeable. Oh yeah, here there are gargoyles f um, flying around, which I didn't even have time to mention. Um, and that's the reason why Rapidus Vio is so nice, is because you can just walk through Medusa heads and gargoyles, which is going to become really, really relevant um, in some of the later parts of Dracula's Tower. Dracula's Tower? Dracula's Castle. It's called Castlevania, not Tower Towervania. Um, actually, now that I think, I don't know, because because now that I think about it, so this part is different on hard mode. This is actually pretty important. Um, they added these balloon pods everywhere, and the reason they did that is because the the way that this that is so fucking stupid. Can I just stop for a second? If I if I fucking glyph union that eel and do 294 damage to it, it should die immediately, and it should not be able to poison me. I don't know, maybe that's a reference to animals in real life that can, like, bite you after they die, and then you get poisoned, even though the animal itself is dead, but this isn't real life, goddammit. Anyway, um, yeah, those balloon pods up there are meant to basically make both paths tricky for you, because the way that, that early, that, that first stretch, um, goes is that the, all the dangerous stuff is underwater, and then if you can kind of... But the only stuff that's going to threaten you on the surface is like a fish man jumping around. But in hard mode they added those balloon pods flying around everywhere so that way you had a choice between either dealing with the starfish and the eel um, below the surface or trying to navigate all those balloon pods up on the up on the top. So Forcing you to make a difficult decision instead of a, an easy one. I always like it when hard mode changes are, are sort of, like, thoughtful like that. Like, they... I can see the reason why they did something. So here, uh, I don't think this boss is any different on hard mode. I think... I... I... Oh, this was such a fucking... See, okay. I was pretty mad about that. What What happened there was that... I didn't- I forgot that the pillars that she summons are destructible, and I didn't- I wasn't thinking at the time about the fact that Rapidus Fio would cause me to break the pillars if I ever tried to run to them, because you need to run to those pillars to- to take shelter underneath them for her big wave attack. And so- but I just, like, wasn't thinking. I didn't realize until the fight was happening and until the wave was already- was already coming that, um... That that was the case. I think what would have been smarter to do there would have been to, um, well, obviously take off rap take off Rapidus Vio, and then otherwise probably just play it identically. But oh well. Look at all those fucking hearts. Yeah, I forgot to I forgot to mention this, but um, new game plus you still gain levels, you still get experience and gain levels, and also you can access all of the uh, you get all the energy tanks and all the magic expansions and all the heart expansions. Um, again, those don't permanently go away. And the consequence of that is that you have way more fucking hearts than you have in a regular run, which means you can do way more with unions, which is a very important change. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Especially combined with stuff like like having the Natesco soul from the very start, like having access to the Natesco plus weapon glyph union, 
Um. Very important. Kind of, kind of just lets you like shred everything, and that, and that's what that's what's kind of fun about it. But that's also what's not super satisfying about the early game. Um. Again, I really wish that they had done what Portrait of Ruin did, and that's probably the only time I'm ever going to say that in reference to Order of Ecclesia. Because the thing about- I don't know, man, because like, I thought a lot about like doing fresh file hard mode, but I don't know if you guys noticed when I was in the Ruvas Forest, like, what that was like, but... Um, that was like a shit show. There were Petrification Medusa heads flying around, like, knights and shit everywhere, and then on, on hard mode, or on- yeah, on hard mode in Order of Ecclesia, you deal 10% less damage, which, to be fair, is the most, um, merciful of those damage nerfs in any of these games so far. In Portrait of Ruin, I believe it was 25%, um, less damage, and then in the worst hard mode in any of these games, in the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night, um, all enemies' health is doubled, meaning you're effectively doing half damage. So that's pretty fucking bad. I don't know why they wouldn't just like like just dump the you do less damage shit entirely. Like if you're if you're if you're gonna bring it down to ten percent, like just get rid of it. <laughs> you know? I mean who cares? Yeah, I was able to use Rapidus Vio to do Taimyo Mountains in one go, but unfortunately I do still have to make two trips to the, uh... to the prison island, because Rapidus Vio doesn't let you get to the, uh... The fuck hit me? Oh, the arrow. Jesus. Doesn't let you get to the second guy. I kind of thought I would have more to say, but... Apparently I don't. Oh, this is actually, yeah, this is a place where Rapidus Vio is super useful. This part here, because you can just, like, jump back and forth. And that's what's what's interesting about Rapidus Vio is the fact that it... It incentivizes movement so much. And that sounds... That sounds, um... Obvious, but... When you... When you become used to, like, running around, like, running into things with that with that aura... Of also, by the way, I want to note, Rapidus Vio blocked that arrow that got shot at me. Um, when you're used to running around with it, it can be kind of easy to forget that that you need to be running in order to have it, you know what I mean? So, and it's kind of a weird thing to be incentivized to do, to be literally running all of the time. Oh, here's actually, a, we're going to come up pretty soon on a really, really important difference in hard mode. These lizard guys, those lizard guys on hard mode with the swords and the shield, I don't understand them at all. I feel like I feel like there's something about them I'm just missing, because what happens with those guys on hard mode is as soon as you engage them at all, they just like charge you and they just hit you. Oh, and this part, well not this part, the, the room after this room is also really scary on hard mode, and you're going to see what I mean with the lizard men more when we get there. I'm going to, I'm going to Try to pay pretty close attention and see if there's just like something I'm missing. Because something that's happened to me more than once when I do these commentaries is that with the benefit of hindsight, with the benefit of like this outside perspective, I can sort of see things that I never saw when I was actually playing the games, and I can think of like solutions that I never thought of when I was actually playing the game. So I'm gonna try to pay attention to the way that the lizard men behave and see if I can figure out in retrospect if there was something that I could have done differently, but before that, we have to get into this room, the scariest fucking room in the whole game. Um, well, probably not the scariest, one of the scariest ones. This is like a fucking Dracula's Curse room, because it's like respawning bats flying back and forth and spikes underneath you. And that's kind of, that's kind of all you can do, really, is just play it the way that I played it there, is just kind of, just kind of get out as fast as possible and just hope you don't run into any bats. I mean, maybe there is some trick to doing it that I never figured out, but like I said, like I just said, I never figured it out. I also want to mention that at the end of the last file, the end of the, of the run, the other run this file has, okay, so they don't charge immediately, but it's like you have to kill them like almost as soon as you see them. 
Okay, they're not charged. Is it? Oh no, it's not. Well, these guys are, are, are much harder to fight, but it's the it's the lizard men in the castle that do that. So I'll have to wait much longer. For, I'll have to wait a little bit longer for that. And then this guy is okay. Yeah, no. See, that's what I'm talking about. There's like a there's like a brief window. You can hit them, but then they just like charge into you, and it's like. It's a problem that I've talked about before, enemies that just run at you, or enemies that just walk into you. It's, um... It's very frustrating. Because it means you have, you have basically no options to, to deal with them, except for just, like... I mean, Rapidus Fio gives you the chance to run away from them, but... My issue is that I never know if I can kill them, or... See, right there, that's what I'm talking about. What, like, what am I supposed to do there? Should I... Because either I kill him before he charges me, or he charges me and he hits me. Because what happens in normal mode is, like, they'll block your attacks, but then you can, like, kind of keep on attacking, and they'll kind of have to keep on blocking. And then eventually you'll get a hit through that will kill them. But here it's like, you attack once, and then they block, and then... And then after you, after they block, they just charge you and hit you. I mean, are, is it, are they reacting to their shield being hit? Should I just wait? I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe if, if if they block, maybe it's like it's a thing where like if they block an attack of yours, then they follow it up with a charge. I have no idea. What's interesting about um, Order of Ecclesia is that a lot of the bosses, a lot of the boss fights are actually completely the same on hard mode. I don't think this guy's any different at all, or at least not not in any way that I noticed. Um, Actually, the, the, the first boss, the, the bug monster in the monastery, is actually different. It's a, it's a lot harder. It'll shoot, um, instead of shooting, like, one web out, it'll shoot three, and it's way tr tr trickier to dodge, but... Much like with the Dulahan in Portrait of Ruin, um... I never really... There's not really any footage of my channel showing, like, the hard, interesting version of that fight, unfortunately. Yeah, see, like, right there, like, what, like... What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to, like, get away from the charge and then double jump over him? I feel like I don't have time. I feel like if I tried to jump over him, he would just, like, swing... He would just, like, overhand swing and hit me. So I really... I really kind of don't get it. Like, there I could double jump over him because I had Rapid as Fio, but... Imagine if this was a fresh file and I didn't have that. How would I... How would I... How would I avoid him? And I also kind of resent the idea that... Fuck. I also kind of resent the idea that the correct solution is not to fight them. Like, if you're going to put an enemy in the game, and then the correct solution is not fighting the enemy, why did you bother putting it in the game? Do you know what I mean? I mean, unless it's like a stealth section or something, you know what I mean? You have to sneak past them, but... Stealth... That's why stealth sections aren't fun. I don't know. I mean, I don't, maybe stealth video games. I've actually never, I've actually never played a dedicated stealth video game. I've played, um, I've played a couple games with stealth sections in them, but I've never played like Thief or Splinter Cell or anything like that. Maybe, maybe those are fun. Anyway, my point, my point is that in a game about killing things, you should make sure that the player has an ability to kill the things that they have to kill. So normally I would glyph union there, but here I'm actually trying to kind of trying to reserve, conserve my hearts, because, um... Because there's no... there are no heart expansions between here and the next boss fight, which is a very important boss fight. Um, it's gonna be the Albus fight on hard mode. And my goal here was to, um... was to no damage it. And I'm gonna point out, and the Albus fight on hard mode is much... It's similar in terms of, like, the general strategy you used to beat him. It's just, in my opinion, much harder to actually pull off because there are so many more things that can go wrong. Where the Albus fight in normal mode it was basically... And I'm explaining this now because once the fight actually starts, I think it's going to go by pretty fast and it's going to be pretty hectic. So I'm just kind of trying to, like, trying to like get ahead of it while nothing interesting is happening. That's a hard mode change. They shoot two of those little um, bouncing projectiles instead of one. Um, yeah, the Albus fight on hard mode... Um, he has more types of shots, and that's important because 
the way that the Albus fight goes generally is you wait for him to queue up a shot, then you quickly double jump over him, so that way you can dodge it and then hit him a couple times and then and then get him to queue up another shot. The problem with with hard mode is that some of his shots um, have an upward like a diagonal upward trajectory to them. Really, we just one of them. He has a fire shot that has like an upward diagonal trajectory to them, meaning that if he picks that one, the window for avoiding it is very um, is very tight. Because now you have to be directly over his head when he shoots it instead of just being. Um... Why did I go back? Oh, I think I want some hearts. Yeah. And I'm gonna also be putting on. Um... Umbra instead of Natesco, because this, because this way I'm gonna do the um, I'm gonna do a Glyph Union that does dark damage and Albus is weak to dark. So let's see, let's see how this goes. I think that Rapidus, oh yeah, this is actually Rapidus Fio actually might make this kind of scary because Rapidus Fio is good, but it's hard to minutely control your position, and in the Albus fight, being like careful with your positioning is is really important. Like right there, being careful with your positioning and your timing. Fortunately, if I do overshoot him and I trigger the fire jump, the fact that I overshoot him means that I'm going to land far enough away from him that he's not going to hit me there. And another big difference that you notice there is when he does his big, like, orange um, death ball attack, that uh, he, like, spins around right before he does it. And this is a, a part that actually Rapidus Fio um, allows for that you could never do otherwise. So what happened there was that usually the way that the his torpor crystal attack works is that he does it and you're basically forced to stand away from him for a while um because he'll he'll just like block you off from moving you'll have to stand in a certain spot and, you, and you'll kind of like let him run around but with rapidus fio you move so fast that you can like stay on his ass the whole time that he's, that he's, like, jumping around summoning the Torpor Crystals, meaning you can dodge the Crystals, and you can stay right up next to him. And that's important because if Albus notices that you're too close to him after a Torpor Crystal, Torpor Crystal attack, that's, like, not what he wants. He wants you to be far away from him when that attack ends. So he'll immediately queue up another one to try to, um, to try to lock you down again. But if you just keep on jumping after him, if you just, like, stay on top of him that whole time, then, um... Then you can just keep on keep on hammering him while he keeps on jumping around. The only tricky part is that, as is always the case with Albus, you can't you can't land right on top of him, because if you do that, then he will do a fire kick attack that you won't be able to dodge. So um, there is some you do have to be pretty you do have to be like sort of careful with it. Oh man, and Barlow on hard mode is also like insane. Um, this, this, you have to bounce off of his head during this attack because he literally freezes the floor for too long. And there, unfortunately, that was a situation where normally what I try to do is try to be on the floor preemptively to, to be able to absorb that glyph attack. But with the, with Glacius, I have to spend so much time in the air to not get frozen that I'm really in danger of, um... But, like, I can't get back on the floor fast enough to be in position and be ready to absorb that glyph. And when he did that lightning attack there... I don't know. Usually with that, with that, like, when he encases himself in lightning and then, like, flies around, the correct solution is just to double jump against the wall and then double jump again. But there, by the time I, I was down from my first double jump, I, like, didn't have time to, um, to avoid the second attack. So I wonder if that's a case of, should I have set myself up on the other wall or should I have, like, ducked after the double jump? I really don't know. I don't know what I could have done to avoid taking damage there. I kind of wanted to no damage Barlow too, but what I really wanted was the Albus no damage, so once I got that, I was like, whatever. I can't really be mad about anything else that happens now. So, here is the first uh, break, and then we're going to go to Dracula's Castle. Or rather, it's going to be a break for me. Um... <coughs> Presumably it's going to be utterly seamless for you, because, except I guess that my voice will probably inexplicably drop an octave, as seems to happen whenever I start up a new commentary. Hi. Or rather, the new section of a commentary. So, um, we are past the, uh, we are past the, um, early game steamroll through everything phase. Now we're actually getting into, um the main game, and I want to point out that the combination of Rapidus 
Theo and me being super over leveled for the early game means that um, what took up roughly two hours of my normal mode run, I finished in about 40 minutes. So when I say you steamroll the early game on New Game Plus, I mean you fucking steamroll the early game on New Game Plus. Hmm. There's a heart max up there, because I didn't, uh, which is why I didn't go back to the village to, um, to restore my hearts. That that was really kind of what was fun about going back and re-recording re -recording this stuff. And I, when I say re-recording, it's because, um, I think I already said this in my, in my longer video, but I'll, that is so fucking dumb. Ugh. I always, I hate that shit. I, I... I mean, part of it is just because I have Rapid as Theo on, so I can't I can't really control where I'm going some of the time. But those ghouls like popping up out of the ground there is actually pretty annoying. Um, anyway, uh, what was I in the middle of, of talking about? Shit. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Oh yeah, re-recording the footage. Um, I had originally. I thought I was done with the game at first. Um, you know, I'd recorded all my Albus mode stuff, I'd recorded my main run, but then when I sat down to actually do the commentary for the first runs that I'd recorded, I was like, this is, this is really bad. Like, this is fucking, this is fucking awful. So I, I just went back and I did them again. Um, and that was, I think that was a smart decision. Every, every single time I've decided to do that with, with game footage, I've I've um, I've concluded that it was the correct decision because you know if people are gonna sit down and watch gameplay you know that shit better be good <laughs> you know what I mean um, you can't you, you better be going through pretty fast and you better be you know playing the best that you can and that's that's what's interesting about the different ways all the different ways in which I've played these these Castlevania games because. Um, so fun, fun fact, this is actually my second attempt at recording this, this second half of the commentary for this video, and given some of the absolute stinkers I've put out on this channel in terms of commentary, you should, you should shudder to imagine how bad the first attempt at this must have been. And one of the reasons why my first attempt was so bad is because I couldn't remember whether or not um, this run was like spliced, whether it was like 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 my Richter mode runs were. What I, what, I'm, what I mean by that is like. I'd make a save state, and then if I died later, I'd reload from that. I always make save states when I record footage, but I just do that for the sake of the smoothness of the of the final product, because I'll because um, I'll record in like hour long chunks, so that way I have like different video files that I can watch and talk over. Talk over. It's really just done for the commentaries, because I can't I can't talk for longer than an hour at a time, basically, before I start to lose my voice. Um, so I always use save states, but uh, until I got to the Richter mode footage, I would never like, I would never use them. I would never reload them. I would just use them for for the uh, the, for the sake of transitioning the footage. Um, but here, I forgot whether I had done that with this footage or not. But as the footage continued, I realized that there's no way I did because because <laughs> this is gonna get pretty sloppy. Um, towards the middle, and, and it's going to pick up at the end, but I'm going to make some pretty big mistakes um, on some of the boss fights. And that's really what, I, what I'm focusing on in terms of what I really want to do well at is the boss fights. Um, I like a lot of the boss fights in Order of Ecclesia. The, the, they're, it was the same thing I liked about Rondo, actually. Because Rondo, the big thing that Rondo did is I feel like Rondo put a lot more emphasis on its boss fights and on like making them spectacular and, and challenging. Anyway, uh, yeah, I spent I spent like half of that first recording, like mulling over like the save state issue, but it but it did end up bringing up a good point, which is kind of the the concept of save states, and this is something that I've talked about before, but I don't know how long it's been since I talked about it. Um, you know, playing retro games because when I first started playing these Castlevania games. I'm, I am not a big, like, retro... And I'm just going to talk about this now, because this part of the castle is kind of boring. <laughs> I'm going to go through the food section. The food section? The kitchen? 
<laughs> well, the, the food section. Hey, could you could you go to the food section and get me a sandwich? No, it's the kitchen. Um, that's why all these butchers are here with chainsaws. The common the common butcher's tool. Anyway, um, uh, when I first started playing, because I'm not like actually that big of a retro gamer per se. I have said in the past that no game made after 2010 is worth playing, but that's mostly because around 2010, I just kind of stopped playing console games. That I was mostly like just hyper fixated on a couple of a couple of um, uh, PC games. Like I'd play a lot of like World of Warcraft, or I'd play a lot of like Team Fortress 2 stuff like that. So I kind of my I end up having a, a a knowledge of video games that basically stops short at around that time. Um, but that wasn't really a a conscious rejection of modernity. It was more just that's just how it worked out. Um, but but I bring this all up to say that I'm not actually a big retro gamer. This was just kind of something that I decided I would try out um, uh, late last year. And so at the time, I didn't think I was gonna record footage. I didn't think I was gonna like go for like one CCs or anything like that. And because I was just kind of playing the games just kind of to play them, I would use save states. Um, like, like, serious, like, say, like, scum, scummy save state shit, like, like, I remember reloading, when I played Castlevania 1, I remember reloading on the, um, on the Grim Reaper hallway, like, just over and over and over and over and over and over again, it was insane, um, and that did ultimately end up benefiting me in the long run, because it did, it did mean that I learned certain sections really, like, really sharply um, when I when I went back to actually play the games for real. But I bring this all up to say that the reason why the save state thing is important to me um, and why I did it felt it felt bad when I did it on Richter mode is because I've played retro games with save states and then without save states. And that's kind of how I would go through that's actually kind of how I would go through the games. It's like, okay, I'm going to beat this game with save states. And then Originally, I was just going to stop there, but then when I went back and decided I wanted to do, like, 1ccs, I would say, Okay, I'm going to beat it with save states. Okay, now I'm going to beat it without save states. Okay, now I'm going to beat it, you know, I'm going to 1cc it. Okay, now I'm going to beat it without dying. And it was kind of like a gradual, like, weaning myself off of it, kind of. Um, until I was until I was comfortable with the game. And I know some people don't think that you should do that. I know some people think, like, save states, using the use of save states is at all, even to, like, practice, is anathema, but... I don't know, man. I think if you, I, I, I just feel like if you can do the one CC, you can do the one CC. You know what I mean? Even if you use save states to practice, if you can buckle down and actually pull it off in the end, I think that's, I think that's acceptable. Um, I mean, fuck, speedrunners use save states to practice all the time, and nobody gives them shit for it. Anyway, um, but I bring that up. But but when it t comes time to like actually sit down and record a whole run, um. When I've actually, once I've actually learned a game, I don't, I didn't want to use save states on Richter mode, and the reason is because I've, since I've played these games with save states and without save states, I, I just know that it's such a different experience, because when you, and the argument people make for playing retro games with save states, like, and, and never, never, never not using them, um, just like beating the game with save states and then just calling it quits, is they say, well, my time is valuable. You know, I don't have time to, you know, autistically learn all the intricacies of these games. And, I, and I'm sympathetic to that, and that's also something that I'm that I'm very sharply aware of, is the time that I spend with these games. And that's kind of where a lot of the tension comes from, where if I'm doing a really long 1cc, um, or a long deathless run, like my Super Castlevania 4 runs are the, one, are the ones that I really think of when I think of long runs that I really didn't want to fuck up. And the reason I didn't really want to fuck up reason I really didn't want to fuck up, rather, is because I was thinking about, God, I don't want the last, you know, 80 minutes, I don't want the last hour and five minutes I spent to be wasted. So I understand the, the time argument, but that's also where the tension comes from, you know? Is you're thinking about everything you've invested into this point, you're thinking, God, this is such a good run up until now, I don't want to, like, choke on level B, <laughs> you know, and, and fucking die to spikes or something. Uh, Dracula's Curse was like that to the fucking nth degree. It's like you get to level A and your heart's just fucking pounding and your palms are sweating and like the, it's it's crazy. Um, and that was like, I mean, level A is a hard level anyway, but when you add on that extra psychological factor, it just gets it just gets crazy. And I'm gonna stop 
this tangent for a little bit to talk about this boss, because this is, like Barlow and Albus, this guy is pretty significantly different on hard mode. The way that hard mode works is that he'll do one attack at a time for the first half of the fight, and then once you get him down to half HP, he'll start doing, like, multiple attacks at a time, or, like, combination attacks. Here, he just does the combination attacks from the very start. And also, a couple of his attacks are more um, complicated than even the phase two of the normal mode version, like that attack right there where he's, like, grabbing at me over and over again. In the second half of the normal mode fight, he'll do it three times. That's the most he ever does it. Here, he does it five times from the very start, and there I fuck up and get hit by it, which is why that's, um, why that's an issue. So, that's pretty interesting. Um, so, I've lost. It's also why I dump all my hearts at the very start of the fight, because I don't have to worry about saving anything for phase two. And also because there is going to be a hard expansion at the end of the, uh, of the caverns here that I'm going to be used, that I'm going to use to refuel before I go on to the, um, to the arms depot. Because I also want full hearts for Elagor, for sure. And I'm actually not going to go out of the, because what I did in normal mode is I went out of an alternate exit that unlocks the large cavern and the training hall. I'm not really going to do either of those. I'm not going to do the training hall because the training hall would not be different at all on hard mode, except it would be more punishing, presumably, if you got hit by the envir environmental hazards. But I'm pretty sure I almost no damage the training hall in the footage that I put out, so I don't, I don't really anticipate getting hit in the training hall at all. And the reason I'm not doing the large cavern is because the large cavern is kind of just a giant fucking meme anyway. <laughs> like, the large cavern is, is pretty dumb. I put up with it in normal mode because I figured out a way to, um basically not interact with a lot of the challenges the way that the game necessarily wants you to, and that was what made it fun. But I don't really feel like doing that twice. Um, anyway, to get back to what I was saying before about save states, um, the extra psychological factor of, of being at the end of a run where it's tense and where you know that if you die you're going to have to go all the way back to the start creates just a totally different experience. I mean, that's where the tension comes from. Right? And that's where the sense of relief and the sense of triumph ultimately comes from, you know? Like, if there's nothing at stake, then then you don't, like, feel as much... You don't really feel anything when you win, in my experience. Well, maybe you don't feel nothing, but... But if there if there is no risk, then, then it doesn't... You don't get the same feeling when you finally do overcome it. And that, and that was what kind of why... I fell in love with doing these challenge runs was like, I love just the way that it felt to finally be able to like, you know, no death Castlevania 1 all the way back then, or fucking, you know, the first time I 1cc Dracula's Curse or something like that, like, that's what's, that's what's just so crazy fun about it. And that's why, you know, people if people want to do that, like, if people want to go back and play retro games and just use save states, you know, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... I wouldn't give people shit for that. Because I don't really feel like... I don't know, man. I don't, I don't really like judging the way other people choose to spend their time. Um, under most circumstances. But... I would strongly advocate that if somebody plays a retro game that they really enjoy, they should probably try playing it without save states because it is going to be a different experience. And and if you really love the game, it should be a fun experience. Because the, the the form that this question often takes in the in the rhetoric of online discourse is, you know, if you beat the game with save states, you didn't beat the game, right? The thing about that is that that's a very, like... It's, 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 not, it's, it's a very, like, loaded way to present the argument. You know what I mean? Because, like, beating the game, technically beating the game just means, like, seeing the end credits, right? So... Like, I get what people mean when they have that discussion. But I think phrasing it in that way is unhelpful. I think it's just much... I think it's much more useful to talk about... To say that the, just that the experiences are different. Rather than... Trying to make some kind of blanket statement about, like, you didn't beat the game, you didn't beat the game. Because some people would say that all of my stuff on my channel is 
completely invalid because I used save states to practice, right? They would say that automatically means that, that none of my shit counts. And I, you know, I mean, what can I say to that? Like, like I concede that, that it would have been a lot harder to get all that stuff done if I didn't have the use of save states to practice. That's absolutely true. You know what I mean? But, um, but like, that's kind of where the conversation begins and ends. So I don't know how useful it is. I, I don't know what the point would be of bringing that up. Do you know what I mean? Um, and these lizard men on hard mode are a real problem because they tend to just like charge you. And I never quite figured out. I never quite figured out what their deal was in terms of like what makes them charge or not charge. Because sometimes they just charge, and I'm. I feel like when they charge me, I I don't I don't know what I can do about it because you can't usually just like jump over them because when they're charging at you they're also winding up a big overhand swing which I feel like is there's no way that doesn't hit you if you're trying to jump over them so I don't really get what the solution is to a lot of the situations excuse me involving the lizard men on hard mode there's a couple places in the talk in the, in the clock tower particularly in the in the clock tower particularly they're just totally baffling to me this is pretty funny so I pick up a moon ring here and this was so funny, because usually when I play these games, it's almost always at night. Like, I almost never play video games during, like, the morning. But it just so happened that here, as I was recording this, it was the morning, which had a slight... which gave me a slight disadvantage, because you get the moon ring before you get the sun ring. So it would have technically been more optimal for me to wait to do this until it was nighttime, so that way I could equip, like, two moon rings and get the benefits because the moon ring gives you a pretty big boost. Um, I, sh I should clarify, the moon ring buffs you at night, the sun ring buffs you during the day. And if I really wanted to min max, it would technically have been optimal to wait until the night time to do this, but I, I don't really remember why. I think this was just like the time that I wanted to get this done. Yeah, like that that shit right there. I actually think I might have been able to jump over him there. Cause cause I had a height I was on like a higher um area from the very start, and I think I could have landed behind him. Cause the the way that the limitation with the lizard man's charge is that they can't charge upstairs. If they hit a staircase, then they just kinda get stuck. And this part is just totally confusing to me. I don't get this at all. Um I mean I played that wrong because I kept on running into him, but okay, I guess that's what you're supposed to do, is just but I was too close to the to the exit to the previous room with that first guy. I don't think I could have run away from him without just like running out of the room. I don't get it. I don't really get it. Because I mean, I thought maybe for a while it was a thing where like if you're too if you're too if you engage them from too far away, is that what makes them charge? Like if if I close distance and fought him from closer, would he not do it? I don't know. I never really I was never really clear on that. These guys are fucking scary to fight in hard mode, by the way, because their range is, like, way longer. Because they'll do a big overhand swing, and then they'll, like, thrust the hammer forward, and if they hit you, it'll do a lot of damage, so those guys are kind of scary. And the, and the other, like, robot guys are, are just, like, faster. Fun fact, the orange robot guy with the dagger... They have names, why am I calling them robot guy? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. The, the robot guy with the dagger... Well, I'll point it out when it happens, actually, because he's going to show up later. Um, yeah, those guys are fucking scary. Those are the guys that can drop the Melio Macer glyph, by the way, which I've, like I said at the end of my last video, literally never seen it drop. Zero times have I seen Melio Macer drop, or any of the Melio um, weapon glyphs that drop off the enemies in this part of the game. Zero times. Which, if I was, if I was a Macer fan, I'd be pretty fucking pissed off at that. This was an interesting, this was actually kind of a frustrating little, like, uh, hiccup that I encountered when I was going through this part of the game, is that, oh, here's the orange guy. Let's see if I kill him or not. Because sometimes I just feel like, no, I'm not, I don't feel like killing him. Alright. Um, when the orange guy dies, he throws a dagger at you, and on normal mode, the dagger won't hit you, 
but on hard mode it will. That was a really strange little change to find out. And this is a uh, this is kind of a, an annoying little obstacle that I that I was encountering it with with this part of the run is that I kept on wanting to swap back and forth between double Natesco and Emilio Hosta plus Natesco, and that was a problem because if I have if I'm using double Natesco, then all the like plus strength gear that I have on is useless. But if I have plus int gear on, and I'm mostly going to be attacking with Melio Hosta, then I'm not, that's not optimal either. What I really wanted here, basically, was um, if I was going to swap, if they, if they were going to let you swap back and forth between glyph setups, they really should have let you swap back and forth between um, gear setups too at the same time. I think that would have been nice. And maybe there is a way to do that, but I, I don't think so. No, you know what the problem is? I just remembered a criticism that I made in my in my first Order of Ecclesia video about Dawn and Aria, Dawn of Sorrow and Aria of Sorrow, which is that when I was talking about like the different glyph setup mechanic that Order of Ecclesia has, I initially was like shit talking Aria and Dawn of Sorrow for not having that. Then I remembered that they did have it. I was like, oh yeah, right, I forgot. Aria and Dawn actually did do that, where you can swap between three different like um, soul setups, but. I think the fact that I forgot that says something in and of itself, and here I accidentally put on the bodysuit when I think I meant to put the Minerva suit back on and I didn't notice, so I'm going to be going into this boss fight doing less damage than I should be doing. Um, but I think the fact that I forgot about that says something like, I can't remember ever really like swapping off of, I don't know, like... Um, Valkyrie plus whatever movement glyph plus like I don't know whatever like gave me the most strength for Arya and then for Dawn I, I feel like I used the same shit basically the whole time anyway uh, the Elagor fight on hard mode is different as you can see he's doing more shit in the first phase where he'll stab the sword once then he'll stab the sword again kind of kind of forcing you up against the wall the crossbow is also shooting many more arrows here than it was in normal mode, even on this first phase when you're in front of him, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to block them all with Melio Scutum anyway. Scutum? Scutum? For some reason I don't feel like saying Scutum, it feels like a like a dirty word or something. Like I'm going to get demonetized for saying it. Um, but otherwise, phase 1 is, is basically the same. And phase 2... Um, you know, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I mentioned this in my normal mode video, but I kind of hate this boss. This is probably one of the worst bosses in the whole game because it's fucking boring. <laughs> like, there's a lot of waiting you have to do. It's kind of it kind of reminds me a lot of the of the crab in the lighthouse boss because they're both sort of supposed to be spectacle bosses where what you're supposed to get out of it is not necessarily pulse pounding action, but you're supposed to be just impressed at the scale of what's going on. Like, with the crab in the lighthouse, it's like, wow, I can't believe I'm fighting a giant crab in a lighthouse. And it's making you use the magnet glyph, so that's a little bit more interesting. Um, this guy's, I think, I think I'm just supposed to be impressed by the fact that I'm fighting something this big. And, and the slow pace of the fight is not supposed to, uh, outweigh that. Outweigh that. And here in the transitional, um, phase between phase one and phase two, as you can see, his one remaining crossbow is shooting at me, which is new. And this is a, a very tricky thing where some usually if you're just doing what I'm doing and you just kind of stay to the right of it and keep Melio Scutum up, um, it's not going to hit you. But sometimes the arrows can come down on you from like weird angles, which is why I'm crouching. I'm just making myself as small as possible. Uh, and now in phase three, actually, he's, he's scarier in phase three because he kicks faster. Um, the crossbow is going to shoot way more arrows, which again, like, Melio Scutum is probably going to block them all, but you never know if an arrow is going to, like, sneak in at a weird angle. And his tail spike shoots out much faster, meaning you, you basically want to be moving the whole time that it's queued up, pointed at you. And that's a problem because, um, uh, you might not necessarily be in position to be moving the whole time without hitting a wall before it actually fires at you. Um... But fortunately here, he did the kick over and over again until I until I got through the phase. And I, I don't know if the attacks in the Elagor fight are random, or if they're dependent on how close you are to him. Because I feel like that was like four or five kicks in a row, which seems remarkable if it's just a random... Um, if it really is totally random, but I never I never really figured out how that part works. And phase three, on when you're on the back... Um, this is the hardest phase to actually learn, but 
on New Game Plus, I have 200 plus hearts. I can just Glyph Union, Glyph Union him over and over again and force him to do this attack over and over again, so it's not really an issue. Another no damage Elagor for me. Let me put that one up on the refrigerator. Is this one I noticed that I didn't have the Minerva suit on? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was 14 attack I missed out on. That could have been that fight could have been a lot faster if I had the Minerva suit on, but oh well. Yeah, when I was when I was doing my first commentary, this is the point when I knew for a fact I hadn't reloaded any save states. Because if I was gonna if I was gonna like for some fucking reason if I if I wanted to, if I was gonna like reload save states for this run, then there's no way I would have let that happen. <laughs> Arma Kustos is supposed to buff you, but I never figured out if the buff that it gave was better or worse than um, just like plus strength. It does. It it buffs you more if you use it in conjunction with the other two Cerberus heads, but I never really saw a good reason to do that because the Cerberus heads, I think they do. Slash and Dark Damage? And Melio Hosta already does Slash Damage, and I don't know how good Dark Damage is at this point in the game. I don't think any of the enemies um, in the final approach are weak to Dark. I, I would be very surprised if they were. So Natesco and Melio, Melio Hosta basically cover everything I want. And here I remember, I think after I kill this guy, that I actually want to go teleport back to the front of the, of the castle. Uh, and that there's no reason for me to go through these hallways again, and I accidentally ran right past the uh, teleport room. Yep, there it is. <laughs> oh well. Oh man, and now we get into the worst part of the game. Excuse me, where I have to go to the fucking clock tower. Which, on hard mode, it's the clock tower. Or no, on, on normal mode, it's the clock tower. On hard mode, it's the fucking clock tower. I think that's the official name for it. I shouldn't complain, you know. I'm I'm in I'm in this position of like such like New Game Plus gives you so much like absolute power that the fact that the clock tower finally puts me in a position where I can I'm actually in serious danger of dying. I guess I shouldn't complain, right? That's just kind of normal. That's kind of what it should be. But you'll see why I hate it when we get there, and that's another like I don't fucking know, man. I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. Send me a leave, leave a leave a message in the cock box if you know how the fuck to fight those lizard men on hard mode because I never figured it out. Like I don't get it. <laughs> like there's I can't jump over him. I I can't run away from him because I'll just run out of the fucking room. He's right in front of me, blocking the only avenue that I have. I seriously don't understand it. Yeah, the clock tower doesn't really become an issue until you get into the second half. Once you start seeing the Medusa heads that petrify you, that's when it turns into a shit show. Um, because, I mean, it's the classic... I mean, this is just what these games do now. All the DS trilogy games. And Aria of Sorrow? Did Aria of Sorrow do this too? Were all the Medusa heads petrification heads on, on hard mode in Aria of Sorrow? I can't remember. But I know this is what they do in Portrait of Ruin, and this is what they do in, um... Uh... This is what they do here in Order of Ecclesia, and this is, this is the part of the game where the Magnet Glyph becomes not fun. Because the Magnet Glyph is cool as, like, a neat, like, movement gimmick to make the early boss fights a little bit more interesting, like the giant skeleton and the crab in the lighthouse. That's kind of the only reason the crab in the lighthouse boss exists, basically, is to give you kind of, like, a crash course in the Magnet Glyph. Like, we had this cool idea, use, a, use our fun new glyph. But here, it becomes garbage because the magnet glyph is a lot like um, is a lot like whip swinging from Super Castlevania 4 where you're very vulnerable while you're doing it and again if you're if it's part of a boss fight that has these like, very measured anticipatable patterns then that's not an issue but 
Here, when there's just fucking Medusa heads spawning all the time doing their goofy ass pattern, like, you can and you can't minutely control your movement or attack, which is how you normally deal with Medusa heads. That was just a, that was just a straight up mistake. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know exactly what I could have. And this is a fucking this is scary as shit. Yeah. This is this is I'm looking at the villagers because I'm fucking panicking so much. And what happened there? This is why it's this is part of why I think this is dumb. Is because. The reason I got petrified twice is because I'm slamming, like, movement keys and the B button to try to break out of petrification. And what that means is, because I'm, like, just slamming the buttons, when I finally do break out of petrification, now I'm stuck attacking. And I don't know if that's just a mistake on my part. Like, I don't know if hitting the B button or not. That was... A Medusa head passed right through my foot and didn't kill me when it could have. And here, I... I almost just decided to say fuck it and tried to fight the rebuild without uh, like one hit away from death but usually I can kill the rebuilds without dying but on occasion they've just charged me when I don't expect it and it just wasn't worth risking it so I, I basically waste my only super potion that I have left last healing item for the run um, but I, I, I don't think I really had a choice because those guys can those guys can just jump at you um And I don't know if hitting the B button actually like makes any difference in petrification, but the point is that like as soon as I'm unpetrified, I wanna like I basically wanna jump. And I don't know if if I don't know if like hitting the A button would do the same thing. I, I just that part is really obnoxious because because it takes something that's cool, which is the magnet glyph, and it makes it like unfun and frustrating. Which is what the whip swing in Super Castlevania 4 is for most of the time, incidentally, for much the same reason. So that part of the clock tower is kind of a disaster. And speaking of disasters, we are here on the Grim Reaper fight on hard mode, and I have Rapidus Fio equipped, but I try to slide kick under that attack rather than dashing through it with my supersonic speed. Pretty inexplicable. Then I fuck up that attack too. I never really learned the Grim Reaper fight on hard mode, um, and I have no fucking clue what you're supposed to do with that attack. I never figured that one out. On normal mode, when he summons those six crescent blades around you, they're high enough off the ground that you can slide kick under them, but they're, they're just, like, fucking all around you, surrounding you on all sides. And I, I literally don't understand what you're supposed to do. I, that just feels like, I, that's like, it's like being told to, to, like, to push a cardboard box through a brick wall. It's like, you can't, like, I can't, there's nowhere for me to go. Like, I don't get it. I don't get that attack at all either. I never really, I never really figured that out. Um, so that death fight is kind of just like a stupid slugfest. Again, much like a lot of the boss fights in Super Castlevania 4. Um, but I guess that's, but that's, I guess that's ultimately my fault for not really, for not really learning it. And here, I don't really know if I have to go through this part again, because where, where I want to go now is the final approach, and I know there's a barrier between... I think I think this was a mistake. I think I could have got to the final approach through a different avenue, because um, there is a barrier... So, okay, there are two ways to get through the final approach. You can get to... you can get to it from the clock tower, or you can get to it from the library. Um, but you need all three of the Cerberus heads in order to actually access it, which is why you can't just like go straight from the library to Dracula. But there's also like a barrier somewhere in the path that leads to the final approach that also stops you, but I don't remember if it's a path... Um, I don't remember where the barrier is. I feel like it probably would have been smarter to just come at this room from the library side because the thing is there's more cave trolls on the library side but there's also none of those fucking medusa heads or those fucking spikes which are like the dumbest shit in the whole game like that it's that one part in particular when you're using the magnet glyph over the spikes and like that that narrow horizontal stretch that's that's dumb. okay it's over here so i so i could have gone through the library side all right well oh well um That's dumb because you just like you can't move. You're you're stuck in this awful position where there are Medusa heads coming at you. And because because you can't minutely control your position with the magnet glyph, you just kinda like you're just gonna die. Like you're just gonna get hit. 
Unless you go super fast and you happen to be on the right, like, point in the spawn cycle, basically. Yeah, that part was pretty fucking scary. Because it's more fucking petrification Medusa heads. And if one of them had hit me there, I absolutely would have died, because I probably would have also been hit by a gargoyle. So, here we are in the final approach. And the final approach is... Okay, so, okay, so if you, like... Okay. I guess if you kill the lizard man fast enough, he doesn't get time to charge. But again, like... Sometimes he... I don't have time to get off, like, more than one attack before he charges. So I really don't... I don't get it. Maybe it is distance-based. Maybe it is just, like, if you if you start fighting him close enough, he won't immediately charge you. I really don't know. That's probably it, actually, in retrospect. That is so fucking cool. That's like the coolest shit I've ever done in the game. A lightsaber follow up into the melee hosta swing to kill that lizard man before he gets to me. Damn, that's cool. So here, I really should be glyph unioning. The reason that I'm not using the, the purple lightsaber to kill these things, even though that's like the most obvious solution in the world, is because there are some parts of the final approach that I, that I know I want to use hearts for. Um, and I'm saving them for that. But that's ultimately a mistake because there are actually two heart expansions that I'm going to get in the final approach. There's one coming up in the big room here, and then there's another one like right before the Dracula fight. So actually, I could have been going hog wild with the Glyph Unions to kill the Ruler Swords. Um, and then using whatever I had left to finish off these guys, and I would have been completely fine. But I think I forgot that there was a heart expansion up in this big room that I'm going to come into next. So that was a mistake, but oh well. Yeah, you know what? I'm 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 seeing some audio desync on the playback that I'm watching, but something that I noticed is that like in one of my Richter Mode videos, I think I was complaining about the audio desync, but then when I watched the actual video on YouTube, the audio desync was gone. So I think it might just be a problem with the program that I'm using to uh to watch this stuff. Because I don't, I don't, because I don't watch this. When I watch footage back, I don't really use like a proper video player. I use um, AVI Demix, which is more of like an editing tool. Um, but I use it because it lets me see uh, like time stamp down to like like times down to like the frame. So that way, if like I have to like stop my commentary or something, I know exactly where I left off. Because um, honestly, the bigger problem than game audio desync is. Uh, is commentary desync, which I have to go back and fix sometimes. Um, super frustrating, actually, because I don't have like a good setup for um, for making sure that I start recording and I start the video at the same time. So there could be a slight delay. Yeah, this room is fucking scary. I almost died there. If he had gotten that attack off, I 100% would have died because the lightning attack does a billion damage and it ticks like multiple times. These things, I don't even want to fucking think about how, how much damage one of these things would do to be on hard mode. It's probably like 300 or 400. Because the gimmick with these guys is that they do a fucking truckload of damage, and then on hard mode, everything does whatever damage it does times a million, so that's a million truckloads of damage, and I, I can't handle that. And as I mentioned earlier, now I'm just, I don't give a fuck, I'm just going crazy with Glyph Unions, because I know there's going to be another, um, another hard expansion before Dracula. Yeah, I do kind of wish I had learned the death fight a little better. I don't I don't really feel good about the footage the way that ultimately turned out, but whatever. <laughs> a lot of a lot of death fights in Castlevania games are kind of I think conceptualized as kind of frantic DPS races. That's what a lot of phase 2 of Dracula's are like too. A lot of a lot of phase 2 Dracula fights. Chronicles in in the fucking Chronicles it's both. You just want to, like, kill death before he kills you, and then you also have to kill Phase 2 or Dracula before he basically just kills you. So, Chronicles was fucking brutal, man. Probably the only game I've played that can that can rival um, Dracula's Curse for just, like, sheer difficulty. So we're coming up on the home stretch. And I think I've only gained like five levels or six levels this whole run, which is pretty funny, but also kind of makes sense, because 
you're not getting that much XP for most of the early game. And it's mostly probably just bosses that are ever going to give you any, and then and then late game bosses that are actually probably going to actually... actually probably going to actually push you over into, um... into a level. And as you can see, I've got my two sun rings on, which actually is is unusual for me, but is more, uh, is more thematically appropriate. What does Shinoa say? I am the, uh, morning sun, come to vanquish this horrible night. Another Simon's Quest callback, by the way. What a horrible night to have a curse. The, the morning sun has vanquished the... I like it. You know what I mean? It's like... I already talked about this, but it's like the redemption of Simon's Quest. It's like, okay, this is what we meant to do. <laughs> I let this dialogue play out. I don't remember why exactly. I think I just kind of like the way that it's... I like the tone here. It's no Symphony of the Night, of course. It's no, uh, it's no What is a Man, a Miserable Little Pile of Secrets, but it's, uh, it's a little bit more serious than that and has more, um, legitimate dramatic value rather than, than camp dramatic value the way that the Symphony of the Night cutscenes and voice acting usually do. So Dracula on hard mode is actually almost identical to Dracula on normal mode. He has two phases. Phase two is exactly the same. Phase one... Um, he shoots more fireballs, but that doesn't matter because I can use an Atesco to block them either way if I'm crouching. But then with this attack, he's going to summon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 magma balls instead of 4 magma balls. So that's the part of the fight that's actually a lot harder is he's basically testing your timing on the magma ball attack twice as much as on, as on, uh, as on normal mode. Um... Again, this is irrelevant because my strategy for this for this attack is just to, to crouch and spam the Tesco. So he could be shooting as many fireballs as he wants, and as long as he's not shooting them so fast that they can slip past my Tesco shots, then it really doesn't matter. And then when we get to phase two, it's going to be identical. I always... I, I feel like that... I don't know. I don't want to complain about this fight being being too easy because I don't think it is. I think I think it's a, an, a I think it's kind of exactly the right level of difficulty, but I feel like that fatal rain attack. I could never quite believe that the, the correct solution was just to stand in the same place every time. It seems a little bit. Um, it seems a little bit like I'm just surprised that it's that simple. Like I kind of couldn't believe that that was the case. I mean, to be fair, it is a little bit more complicated because there is an element of timing to it. If you because if you start jumping and trying to hit him. While he's casting Fatal Rain, he actually will hit you with the projectiles as they initially shoot out of his hand. And so, I'm going to start using Glyph Unions here, but I'm not just using them willy-nilly. I'm using them because what I want is I want him to start Phase 2 in the middle of the room, and I want him to be facing to the left. So, I'm going to be hitting him with, like, Lance Shots every other time, but whenever he's in that position, like, the, the Fatal Rain position is exactly what I want, I'm going to start slamming him with Glyph Unions, because that's where I really want him to be. Um, the reason I want him to be in the middle is because I'm, I'm so used to playing Phase 2 with this certain rhythm, and with him being in the middle and with me being on the left, it's just what I'm the most accustomed to, um, so that's, that's really what I want. And I'm gonna try to explain again what's going on in Phase 2, just be, just in case, um, yeah, and this is exactly... The Fatal Rain part is when I'm going to be slamming Glyph Units into, into him, and I face him exactly when I want. Beautiful. Um, and here I do a thing that I also do on normal mode, which I explained on normal mode, but I'll try to explain it again. Um, so Dracula doesn't want you to use Velaticus. If you try to use Velaticus to fly over his attacks, he gets very upset with you, and he summons big purple fire pillars that shoot all the way up into the sky. Um, but his casting that response attack with the fire pillars interrupts the attacks that he would otherwise be doing naturally at this point in the fight. So that means that instead of him doing whatever he's about to do there when he first throws his arms out, he instead uses a fire pillar attack. And even though the fire pillar attack goes all the way up to the ceiling, it has a very limited horizontal range, so it's pretty easy to dodge. Um, well, with the winged boots at least, and with the mercury boots, honestly. Um, so if I just like like tap Velaticus and then immediately cancel it, he'll interrupt whatever other attack he was going to do and use the fire pillar attack that I know I can always dodge. And the reason that's important is because the other attacks he can do in phase two are both pretty tricky. The, the bat attack 
is it's hard to figure out what to do with the bat attack. Once you figure it out, it's pretty easy. You just kind of have to do like a slide. But what's, what's scary about the bat attack is that it's extremely punishing. Like if you get hit by the bat attack, you're gonna fucking die almost definitely. And then the other attack you can do there is he summons like these dogs that like run all over the floor and fucking jump at you while you're trying to play the game. And I have no idea how to handle that on Shinoa. On Albus, I had to figure out how to handle that, because on Albus, you don't have any equivalent of the, um, the Volaticus, uh, uh, interrupt exploit. Um, exploit, eh, I guess it is kind of an exploit. I, I felt like, I was just so annoyed that, like, they were saying, we're, we give you this, because they give you this tool, Volaticus, and then you get to the Dracula fight, and they basically tell you, oh, now you can't use this. Like, you get Vladicus right before the fucking end of the game, so it's, like, only usable on the large cavern on the Dracula fight. So I was annoyed that they were basically telling me that I can't use the fun new toy that I got, but then I realized, wait a minute, if I use it in this particular way, now I can, like, use their own security measures against them. And I, I skipped through the rest of the dialogue, but I let this part play out at normal speed because this is the important part. Man... You know, sometimes, sometimes when stories are created, when people like conceive of stories, um, it also it'll start off with like a single idea, like I want, or like a single scene, or like or a single image, and then everything else you do is kind of to get you to that original idea that you had, or to that scene, or to that image, and that's like that's the thing about Order of Ecclesia is it all culminates there. You know what I mean? That's like the whole story right there. That just that one image of Shinoa. And so, something about that is just very narratively impressive to me. That that's kind of where it all culminates and that's kind of what it all leads to. And that's and that's the important part. It's more important than than the nitty-gritty of, wait, how is Albus alive in Dominus, and why was he dead, and then he came back, and then he put blood into glyphs in the villagers? How did all the villagers, how did he know the villagers were Belmont descendants? How did he, did he get them all to the village, or was it just coincidence? Blah, 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 whatever. Not important. Not important. It's, it's the emotional stuff that's important. Anyway, um, that's hard mode. That's new game plus. I, uh, not really as interesting to talk about unfortunately, as Port of Ruins hard mode. Because Port of Ruins hard mode on max level 1 with, like, the Konami Man and Twin B was more like... more like an actual alternate challenge in the game. This is kind of like you spend the first half of the game just kind of steamrolling everything, and then you shit your pants in the clock tower, and then death... then you have to, like, DPS race death, and then the game is basically over. Um, so not as interesting, but still pretty fun, just because it's mostly just because it's fun to zoom around with Rapidus Vio and, and run it at super supersonic speed. Another funny thing I want to point out about Order of Ecclesia, by the way, is that Order of Ecclesia finally succeeded in becoming a a canon Castlevania entry set in the 1800s. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I've started playing the N64 Castlevania games, which I am going to make videos about, um, and. Those are set in the 1800s, and they are in an alternate timeline. And then Circle of the Moon was set in the 1800s, and then that was declared non-canon. And then, the, so the 1800s were like this dead zone, this like enforced dead zone in the official Castlevania timeline for so long until this game came along. And the reason for that, I think, is because of an abandoned plot thread from an unreleased Castlevania game called Castlevania Resurrection, which was a 1999 game that was going to come out for the Dreamcast, but ultimately didn't. Um, and that had a plot line involving time travel, which is um, makes me kind of grateful that it doesn't come out, because I'm not a big fan of time travel. But in that game, Sonia Belmont inexplicably wakes up in the 1600s. Sonia Belmont's the, the Belmont from Castlevania Legends. She's supposed to be from, like, the 1400s, or the, no, the, like, the 1200s, or, like, the 1000s? The 1000s, the 1000s, whatever. She wakes up in, like, the 1600s, immediately prior to Simon, to, like, Simon Belmont era, and then another Belmont from the future also shows up there. And that character's name is, I think, Victor Belmont, and the idea with him is that he's the first Belmont who, like, refused his vampire hunter duties and went and became a mercenary, and I think the intention was that was supposed to explain why the Belmont line had vanished by the time you get to the, the, the uh, um, like, Order of Ecclesia, or, um, uh, yeah, why they say the Belmonts aren't around anymore. 
and, and hence hence secret societies need to start doing shady research to <laughs> to fill the void. That was the original explanation for it. I don't know what the explanation for it is now, if there is one, but again, like the nitty gritty of the lore and the timelines and the whatever in Castlevania games, not super important. Ultimately at base, we have a cool idea for a game, we're gonna have somebody go fight Dracula. That's Castlevania basically. But it's still fun for me to like speculate and and try to piece things together. I just kind of do it as an intellectual exercise. There's a really funny interview that I saw once with Ko Koji Igarashi where they were talking about the Game Boy games and how there was some initial confusion between who the protagonist was because um, Dracula, because Castlevania the Adventure was developed at around the same time as Dracula's Curse and they both said these are prequels to Castlevania 1 and it wasn't clear at the time if Trevor Belmont was the protagonist of both or not and so somebody was asking about that and he basically just said, yeah, you know, <laughs> like, nobody really knows what's going on. <laughs> People just kind of do what they want, and it all it, will, it all works out, which is fine, because these games are, are more about the individual stories, not necessarily about a big overarching one. Anyway, um, that's Order of Ecclesia, almost. Next up, I'm going to be doing Albus Mode, which I'm really excited to talk about, and which should be much more interesting to watch than uh than this if i apologize if this was boring i don't know maybe it was maybe it wasn't i'm always happy to watch order of ecclesia man i'm always happy to just like see it and hear it you know just like sitting here listening to the super fun soundtrack it's unfortunate that i made so many videos about portrait of ruin because there was a certain point in time when like watching portrait of ruin footage made me like kind of feel bad but that's not the case here and there's going to be more coming up pretty soon and keep on earth rocking